You be like, hey yo, what's the price? Yikes, when it come to me, I do nothing twice. Yikes, two, two, three, got you taken. You know, we don't usually have situations like this here. The innocent life was lost over something childish. Quiet lady just sat, sat around and, you know, sat on the porch, was able to see her. Point, all I can say is that I'm praying for them. Like, it's nothing no one can ever say in a situation like this, but it's going to be her and I'm going to be deeply praying for them. As a community, we, 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 we are very, you know, upset and sad about it. Anything that, that we all could do, you let us know and we try to do whatever we could do for the family. Been around here forever, so everybody know one another. So it's like a family. We a family or a tater block. So it was really, really sad. Monday, June 3rd, 2024. At approximately 11.15 p.m., Detroit Fire Department responded to a call of a house fire on the 6,000 block of Seminole Street in Detroit. Firefighters extinguished the blaze and would find the body of 53-year-old Tina Doro. A Detroit home decimated. One woman dead and two hurt. Police now saying two women may have done it on purpose. It happened last night just after 11. Police say a house in the 6,000 block of Seminole went up in flames. This is the aftermath of that tragic house fire that killed one person and left two others injured. The fire happened at around 11 p.m. on Monday at a house on Seminole near I-94 in Van Dyke. According to Detroit police, a woman died as a result of the fire and medics transported two other people who were inside the house to the hospital. The fire was so intense that it burned the side of the house next door. Neighbors tell me that no one lives in that house. Drew Caldwell lives down the street from the house that caught on fire. He's lived in the neighborhood for 50 years and even knew the woman who died. Quiet lady just sat, sat around and, you know, sat on the porch, was able to see her. Police are investigating this fire as arson. They arrested two women who they believe are responsible for setting the house on fire. As a community, we, 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 we are very, you know, upset and sad about it. Anything that, that we all could do, you let us know and we try to do whatever we could do for the family. Her body was found on the stairway landing. Medical personnel arrived and would pronounce her deceased at the scene. A 57-year-old man and a 65-year-old woman were also injured as a result of the fire. The two surviving victims, whose names were not released, were transported to a local hospital for treatment. A 31-year-old Livonia woman, who was identified as Cinnamon Charmaine Rigmaiden, was arrested by Livonia police the next day and was turned over to the Detroit Police Department. Detroit police working very quickly on this one, getting a female suspect into custody within 24 hours of allegedly throwing a firebomb at her ex-boyfriend's house. A string of threatening text messages from this woman in the back of a police car to her ex-boyfriend Monday night. He lives here on Detroit's east side. Shortly after he got those messages around 1115, sources say his home got hit with a firebomb. Inside the house near Grashit and Van Dyke was an elderly woman stuck in a wheelchair. Her son, who got those text messages earlier, and another woman. Those two were able to jump out of a back window and survive, but the mom did not make it out alive. That was like really, really heartbreaking for the family you have to have to sit here and just watch watch that sources tell Fox 2 the firebomb was intended for the victim's son and that there was evidence that the female suspect an ex-girlfriend bought an accelerant from a nearby gas station shortly before the house was torched especially this young generation they're different they need to find God, get close to the guy. Within 24 hours, Detroit police moved in on the ex-girlfriend hiding out at a motel in Livonia. Another woman with her was in cuffs too. Neighbor Brandy can't get over it all. 40 years on this block. Oh, I've been around here forever. So everybody know one another. So it's like a family. We a family or a tater block. So it was really, really sad. The charred reminder of the heartless act that killed the mom stuck in a wheelchair. At this point, all I can say is that I'm praying for them. Like, it's nothing no one can ever say in a situation like this, but it's going to be her, and I'm going to be deeply praying for them. According to the police, Cinnamon had recently broken up with Tina's son, Quentin, who was not at the house at the time of the fire. Cinnamon was allegedly upset over the breakup when she doused a couch left on the front porch with an accelerant and lit it on fire. After Cinnamon started the fire, she went back to her car 
and watched it burn before texting the vets. Your house is on fire. Quentin's mother, his uncle, and his uncle's fiance were all inside the house at the time of the fire. Cinnamon knew that the three were inside the home because she was just at the house 30 minutes prior, talking to Quentin's uncle. Tina was paralyzed on one side of her body, which hindered her ability to get out of the house once it became engulfed in flames. The uncle's fiance had to jump from the second floor window, fracturing her ankle in the process. His uncle, he had to flee the house to avoid suffering smoke inhalation. He had to make the tough decision to leave his paralyzed sister in the burning house. As stated in the investigator's report, this defendant decided that she wanted to make her ex-boyfriend, quote, feel her pain, which she was able to do on the 3rd of June. 31-year-old Cinnamon Rig Maiden was charged in connection to a fatal house fire on Seminole Street Monday that killed her ex-boyfriend's paralyzed mother, 53-year-old Tina Duro. They recently broke up. Two others were injured in the fire. She deliberated for at least three, two to three hours beforehand. She then decided she was going to go to a gas station, purchase 75 cents, worth of gas. Prosecuting attorney Tiana Livingston says Rig Maiden with gas in hand drove to the house and poured it on the couch on the front porch. Inside was the ex-boyfriend's mother, his uncle, and his uncle's fiance. She did not call 911. Instead, as the house is burning with the people inside, she texted her ex-boyfriend and said, your house is on fire. She says the uncle fled the home and his fiance jumped out of a second story window and fractured her ankle when she landed on the ground. The victim in this case, who I've already stated her limited mobility, was able to climb out of her room and made it to the stairway second floor landing where her body was found burned. Friday, Rig Maiden was charged with one count of felony murder and two counts of assault with intent to murder. Her bail was denied. I don't think that any actions uh, were, were meant to, to were meant to harm anyone, but but property. And uh, uh, unfortunately, there were uh, some deadly consequences here. It's important to note that the ex-boyfriend was not in the house at the time of the fire. Cinnamon is being charged with one count of felony, murder, two counts of assault with intent to, murder, three counts of first-degree arson and one count of third degree arson. Our prayers go out to the friends and family of Tina Duro. It's truly sad and tragic that this woman lost her life all because somebody couldn't control their emotions. And part of me wants to believe that Cinnamon didn't intend on that fire spreading the way that it did. But at the same time, based on things that she's shared and posted on social media, it can only lead you to think that she's been contemplating this for some time now. And it seems as though it all started late last year when she and another woman started trading subliminals online, both claiming to be Quentin's main chick, when in all actuality, he was seeing the both of them. Apparently, Quentin has a June birthday, and he could be seen spending his birthday month with both women. Let's say, talk your shit. Yeah, everybody don't smoke squares. Ooh. Dumbass. You know. You got that splash. Now fast forward to 2024. And you could see that the post and the post share become more threatening. And I just find it crazy how some of the things that she shared and posted on social media closely relate to the actual events that occurred. And some of her posts even leads me to question her mental stability. But I don't know, man. Y'all let me know your thoughts down below. And if you haven't already and you feeling the content, subscribe to the channel. Because I got more videos coming. And I'm going to catch y'all in the next one. Yikes. You'll be like, hey, yo, what's the price? Yikes. When it come to me, I do nothing twice. Yikes. Two, two, three. Got you taking.